Good morning. Good morning. I had COVID that kicked me and I kicked it back. <laughs> Take your hymn books, please, and turn to number 87. And stand with me, please. please. Angels, we have heard on high. Number 87. to see all of you. You started out on the right foot in church on the first day of the year. And uh, what a blessing. 2023 is already here. It kind of blows my mind, to be honest with you, because I remember we were thinking in 1999, we were thinking about our computers were going to fail and uh, some of the cars were going to have trouble with the engines and all that because of the comp Remember all that? And here we are 23 years later and everything's just fine. Uh, maybe a little bit better, better than maybe we thought. But anyway, what a blessing to see you this morning and what a wonderful night we had last night. It was just such an encouragement to me to, to just keep things the way they are and continue to get together on, on uh, New Year's Eve. Um, we watched a great film. If you haven't seen it yet, it's just it's called uh, the, I Heard the Bells. And you may have heard about that film. I highly recommend it. Uh, we played it here. We paid for it to be able to show it. And what a blessing uh, it was to my own heart. And uh, if you haven't seen it, 
you got to get a hold of that and see it before the, the, the holiday is over. And uh, I know that we got tomorrow off. A lot of you folks do, so you're going to enjoy being able to be here even tonight. We have the Lord's Supper tonight here at Grace. How to start out a, a new year with a fresh start and uh, focusing on the Lord. Had a great Sunday school class. Men, you are missing Sunday school. You're missing it. Uh, we're doing a uh, live, leading with... Um, a uh, book on principles, and so it'll help you understand a little bit more how to live godly in this wicked world. Wow, a lot going on, but let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll greet one another. Father, we thank you that we can come together on the first day of the new year in church. Lord, I thank you for the faithfulness of those that have come this morning. And for those that are watching at home, Lord, I pray that they'll get their Bibles ready, and they'll be uh, earnest about their listening. Father, we thank you that we have the scriptures and we can continue to preach in this country and still have Christian schools and still raise our children in a way that would honor you. And Father, I pray that you would be with all of us, that we would look at this as a fresh start and to be able to begin uh, new things and to make biblical resolutions so that we can live better for you, Father. And I pray that you'd be with those that couldn't be here because of difficulties and illness. Uh, Lord, I pray for, for Joan Rogers and her family, um, at the death of her son, just a sudden death. Lord, I just pray that you would comfort Joan, be with Terry. Lord, I just pray that you'll help Joan to stay strong for others now at this time. We pray that you'd continue to comfort the, the Wentland family as the funeral was Friday. Father, we just pray that you'd be with all of the children and the grandchildren, that they would look to you and that they would understand more of what the gospel is, is about. And uh, Lord, because of Sylvia's death, I pray that there'll be more uh, that will come to know you. And we just pray that you would, your spirit would work in the hearts of the family. And we pray for the Monroes today. They can't be here. They were probably watching uh, out on the East Coast. Uh, Brother Ed is not well at all. We just pray that you would continue to strengthen him, Lord. And there are others that are sick and that are dealing with difficulties. We think of Ruth Mortensen. Father, she needs to be strengthened. I pray that your Holy Spirit would comfort her and let her know that you love her, but let her know that we love her, Father. And I just pray that you'd be with those that can't be here. Be with my, my uh, wife's uncle, Gene, as he just got a transplant last night. We just pray, Lord, that everything will function well. Um, that, uh, thank you for letting us live in a, in, a, in, a, in a country that has such great hospitals and physicians that we have such a wonderful place to live, Father. I pray that you be with Gene, uh, just newly in the faith. I pray that you would guide him and give him new life now and just be with the family there also. And Father, I pray for the ones that are here but not feeling well. I'm thankful that they came. And I pray that you would speak to their hearts today. Be with the Spanish-speaking ministry, Father. The desire is to be able to uh, have a place for the Spanish-speaking people to come and uh, learn more from your word how that they need to live and raise a family, but most of all, how they can be saved. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word this morning, and we ask now that your Holy Spirit would be here and work in our hearts. We know that he lives within us, that are born again, and if somebody here has not been saved, I pray that they'll understand today and give their heart to you. We love you, Lord. That's why we're here, starting out a new year in church. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you sit down, and shake hands with at least 11 people, okay? 11. Hey, how'd it go this morning? Okay. Hey, okay, yeah, you're stronger. Oh, yeah. Did Rose make it? Not Rose. It, it just happens. I mean, you're talking about, uh, who was it? I think it was, it was Flo. She said, I finally can say it's not a long time. As long as it doesn't get a long time. Well, I'm ready to go, brother. Anytime, brother. I'm ready to go. No, come on. We need your I'm round. ready for the rapture. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, if you can remain standing and turn to number 91. This was the song that my wife and I were going to sing last week. It wouldn't have been very pleasant because all we did was cough and hack. So there's a song in the air, one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time. Amen. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the seated. Good morning and welcome to Grace Baptist Church. We're so glad you could join us this morning. If it's your first time visiting with us or the first time in a long time, please raise your hand. As the ushers go past, they'd like to present you with a visitor's card and a gift. If you could fill out that visitor's card and place it in the offering plate when it goes past in a few minutes, we'd appreciate having a record of your visit. Thank you for joining us. Now, Carolyn Morrow will come and present a missionary report. Good morning, everyone. Well, the missionary today is the Mansells in Japan. Um, Ken and Vicki Mansell, they've been there for a very long time, almost 40 years, I think so. Um, this is from November 2022, and I have a little update after that as well. So, um, the Mansells, say, Dear praying friends, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart, from Psalm 40, verse 8. O oh, to live daily with these great truths in our lives, first having an attitude of delight and joy in doing the will of God both outwardly and inwardly, second to know God as my God, not just the God of our family or church, but a personal relationship of daily fellowship, and thirdly, to know the law of God in our hearts because we have studied, memorized, and committed to submit to the just and righteous laws of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Let us encourage one another and pray for one another that we may live such daily lives for Christ, especially as the day approaches of his return. May the Lord find us faithful. Our joy was tested this month when, for the first time in about 30 years of hosting the annual Hokkaido Missionary Thanksgiving gathering, we had to postpone it once and then cancel it altogether as COVID and then colds hit a couple of families. 
COVID has been on the extreme rise these last four weeks with 9,000 to 11,000 cases a day on our island, which is the size of South Carolina. So far, it has only affected one of our church families, but COVID also has kept us from gathering again beyond Sunday school and the main service. We're praying we can bring together our plans for our Christmas program despite these challenges and desire to see those that might come, feel free to do so. Our Christmas program, Lord willing, will be in the afternoon of the 18th of December. While most Japanese we invite for other times will not come, they might come to this event. May Christ's story work in the hearts of those that attend, and may we see an interest for someone to study more. Various moments of giving God glory and saying a bit more about Christ comes in many ways. We always want to be ready to give an answer. It's a blessing to know that God does give us the words during an English class, during a music group practice, when stopping by someone's house for just a moment. How we desire to be able to do more Bible study with local people, but we are also thankful for the ministry God gives us in various ways, including both of us being involved in missionary support groups here in Japan. As senior missionaries, we can help in various ways, even if even just to encourage the next generation. Via the internet, Vicki has a ministry of counseling several women as they travel hard roads. Attending local events such as a Culture Day event recently allowed Ken to meet a new employee at the city offices in charge of public relations for Toshio. We trust we can get to know her more. Vicki taught a seasonal snow globe craft at a local one-time event and got to give out six booklets on the true meaning of Christmas. We are asking God to use all our efforts, great and small, for his glory. So they do have um, four prayer requests here. Well, the first one is for Estella. She is a lady um, in her 20s who had to flee from Malaysia because she accepted the Lord and her family was Muslim. So um, Estella needs a lot of prayer. Um, her language test was canceled because of her visa being taken away. She hopes when a new visa is issued that she can apply again. Her interview for refugee status went well and was over two hours long. It was very wearing for her. She will not know the progress of this application until later this month. She still cannot apply for any jobs during the six month transition, so has to just rely on others for daily support and health needs. She so desires to support herself. We thank you for praying and giving toward her needs. Um, the second one was for the Christmas program, and they did actually have that. Um, they, they were able to meet in person for that program. That, that, that went well. So, um, Third one, preparation for a needed reporting furlough to our Northwest churches and family in the spring of 23. Ken, to be able to contact all the Northwest pas pastors to get the schedule finalized. For the provision from God through others for the higher ticket prices and extended trip we need to make, we are estimating expenses around $6,000 while in the States and covering monthly costs while away. And finally, they need someone to fill in on Sundays while they're on their furlough trip. All right, so they say, just a prayer at night. Um, we think about Japan, and they say, your evening is our daytime. Um, serving Christ together in the wondrous grace, Ken and Vicki Mansell. And I also want to tell you all that Ken's birthday is January 19th. He's turning 70. So there are three birthday cards out in the foyer. Um, there's the, the table underneath the missionary um, TV. Um, if you could all sign one of those cards, I'm sure that would be a blessing to them. They, um, Vicki wants to surprise them with a bunch of cards. So if you could sign that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Take your bulletins, we'll have a look at some announcements. Uh, January 6th and 7th is the pastors and deacons retreat. Uh, Pastor Howell will have um, contacted you if you're um, one of the people who will be going to that. On January 8th, we will have a leadership meeting here at 5 o'clock before the evening service. Pastor will probably have some more details on that as well. January 15th is our annual business meeting, and we will have a potluck dinner after uh, the business meeting. So we'll have the morning service, then we'll have the business meeting, then we'll have a potluck. On uh, the 2023 Bible reading schedules are on the table in the back, and so are the offering envelopes. And of course, as usual, there are sign-up sheets for the snacks for the teens and the meals for the Reformers Unanimous. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to say thank you for all of you that have been praying for me and uh, had a part in getting me some help with my pain. And uh, I am almost completely pain-free this morning. And so watch out 
Uh, I, I'm tired of 2022. I, was, I wanted to get a shovel last night and literally go out and bury 2022. Uh, that was a, a year where I had to stretch myself a little bit. And just when you think the challenges in life are over, you turn 61 <laughs> with uh, sciatica pain that won't go away. And uh, for you that don't know, uh, I had a surgery that went bad um, from the VA. My left leg is still not working right completely, but the pain was what I wanted to go away. And uh, so I, I, I had a procedure done where they put... Uh, fibrin into the disc, uh, four of my discs, uh, four bottom lower discs, and uh, kind of a strange thing to have done, but the sciatica pain every day gets less and less. I slept last night for a few hours on my left side. I haven't done that for about 18 months, and so I uh, praise the Lord for that. But I wanted to mention that a lot happened in 2022. As you recall, uh, if you have this little sheet in your bulletin, I uh, just wanted to mention that it was uh, June 24, 2022, that this day will be for many of us one of the memorial days of our lives. Um, on this date, the U.S. Supreme Court ended the 50-year reign of terror on the unborn child. And so it is one of the things that we really stand for is life. Um, we stand for life, but we also stand for Jesus Christ giving us eternal life. And so we're, we're interested in the Access Center right here in Madison, and uh, you give toward that. We're, it's one of our mission uh, ministries that we support, and we're so thankful that we have a place where instead of picketing, we can actually reason and talk to some of these young ladies that are hurting and then give them some solutions, maybe adopt, uh, the baby can be adopted or so on. And so continue to pray. There's a couple of dates there to the right. If you look at that, January 16th is Religious Freedom Day. And also uh, the 22nd is Sanctity of Life Day. And so Sunday. So we're looking forward to this month. Uh, like I said earlier, it's hard to believe that uh, life has gone so uh, quickly for me. Uh, I can't believe it's already 2023. I remember uh, a lot. Uh, supposedly... Um, I, I suppose many of you remember, too, when you were quite younger and things were a little different. Uh, we do live in a, in a pretty difficult culture and society, but, however, there are still people that want to do what's right. And there are still people that want to honor the Lord, glorify Him, live for Him. And where are they going to go? Uh, let them come to Grace Baptist Church and get busy for God and continue to minister. I appreciate all the ministries we have here if you're interested in helping us. Uh, become a member of Grace. We need you to come and help us with the ministry, with the children's programs and so on, the RU program and others. But God has been good to us. We have wonderful people here, and I want to thank you for a wonderful year and looking forward to 2023 now. Our, our, our theme for the year is always abounding. And if you look behind me, the unmovable banner is down. Uh, doesn't it look different back there without the banner? It sure does. Still in the bulletin, unmovable. It'll start next week, uh, always abounding. And uh, that'll be part of the message this morning. And you'll get the thinking a little bit of where I'm going when we start preaching this morning. Once the men come, we'll take up the offering. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to be able to give a portion back to God, which, which many of you do. Uh, God has been good to all of us. And we want to be able to give back to him. The first day of the week, we come together as Christians to be able to give back to our God. And by the way, you continue to follow his will. He'll bless your life. He will bless you if you just be obedient to God. You'll see the blessings come in. Brother Brian, can thank the Lord for the offering, please.
Please take your hymn books one more time and stand with me, please. And turn to number three. Number three. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing calls for songs of loudest praise. Come, thou fount. Please remain standing for the scripture readings. Good morning. Um, I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 this morning. I'm going to be reading verses 51 through 58. After I'm done reading, we'll read that last verse, 58, all together. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall, shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And if we could read that last verse all together, please. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us today. I'm thankful that everyone was here, everyone that's here was able to make it this morning. I pray for the rest of the service. I pray for the special music. I pray for Pastor that you would give him strength during his sermon this morning. I pray for the rest of the day today that uh, everyone would, would come back tonight for the Lord's Supper. I pray for safe travels for everyone for the rest of the week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Have a 
Christmas, many people begin to start thinking about uh, their resolutions for the year and uh, it's things, things that they could actually get rid of, maybe some of the things that they need to add to their lives. And so uh, I think it's important for us to do that. I think it's important for us to improve. Um, there's uh, different types of things that people are involved in. My uh, goals.com recently released an annual predictions of the types of things that people would actually do uh, as resolutions. And uh, they gave it in a, in a list of as far as percentages. And 22% uh, of resolutions involve health uh, and fitness. Uh, some people say, well, I'm going to stop drinking those caramel lattes on the Monday after Christmas. And then you say, well, I'll begin the Tuesday after I go back to work, you know, and these things uh, deal with health a lot of times, dealing with their fitness, being able to walk, maybe you're going to buy a treadmill uh, or something like that. 18% deal with the career, 15% personal growth and interests, 11% uh, personal finance, 11% take time management and organization, 8% uh, of, the, of the decisions made deal with family and relationships. I think that should be uh, more of a priority. Education, 6% and training. 5% uh, home improvement and real estate. Uh, and 3% uh, recreation and leisure. And so that's the breakdown. But I think a lot of times we make these resolutions and uh, we have these goals that we come up with. Um, and then we break them. We start out really, really good. Uh, and say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not eat any more uh, breads for a while. I'm going to go on a carb diet or whatever. And then the middle of February, or maybe even the middle of January, you say, you know, it's not so bad. I'm not going to follow that completely. I heard a story uh, about a woman who was at home, and she walked by her bathroom door and looked in. Her husband was on the scale, and he was sucking his belly in. And uh, she said, it's not going to help you. And he says, it sure does. I can see the numbers now. <laughs> and, and so that's the case, I think, at our house. And, uh, but I think when it comes to goals, I think we ought to be thinking uh, in resolutions, making that for 2023, we ought to be thinking about your walk with God uh, in 2023. Uh, maybe say, you and me, Lord, 
or, or maybe uh, Lord, you and me in 2023 have a little slogan somewhere uh, where you could write it down to remember that your relationship with God is, is important. And uh, I remember challenging people to read their Bible all the way through. I've done that for 25 years here at Grace Baptist Church, and I've had deacons come to me and say they've never read the Bible all the way through, but they did, and they've done it ever since. Uh, uh, I think um, some of the deacons have done that. I, I had one of the deacons come up today or text me this last week and say, all I have is Malachi left to read, and I've read the Bible all the way through. Uh, I was at Walgreens yesterday walking through and getting some things for my wife, and I uh, was hoping that they would be open. They're closed now for a certain time in the afternoon. They open up at 2 o'clock, and so I had five minutes to, to spare, and I was walking around, and this little, two little black kids were in there, and I was, thinking, I was thinking about how they were treating one another, and... And I uh, saw the little boy grab a piece of candy, put it in his pocket, and uh, was acting really nice to his sister, and his sister was nice to him. And, and uh, all of a sudden she said, Malachi, come over here. And so I happened to get in line, and they were right behind me. So I said, Malachi, did you realize that Malachi is a Bible name? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, Malachi is in the Bible. Did you know that? What's the Bible? He didn't know what a Bible was. His parents did, because they named him Malachi. You know, and... Uh, her name was Malaysia. I thought that was a pretty cute name. And uh, I didn't talk to him too much because they might think, you know, get handcuffed or something and, and in our world we live in today. But I thought about, I wonder if those kids know the Lord. Got in my car and I got in my truck and I, I watched them walk across the street. I know exactly where they live. Went to the apartment there and I thought, maybe I'll go visit their parents someday. Then I look over at Malachi and say, Malachi, did you know it was wrong to take that candy? He thinks nobody saw him, but God saw him. Some nosy pastor saw him. <laughs> Creepy, friendly pastor, whatever. But I think about my own life personally, and I think we've got a new year and a fresh start. It's the first day. Maybe you would want to read the Bible all the way through. We give you the ability to do that and the opportunity. We have Bible reading schedules. Janet's been so kind to download them. and They're on blue paper this year. Uh, a little more maybe perhaps attractive, but it gives you a way to be able to read the Bible all the way through. You can read a little bit of the Old Testament, and then it moves into the poetry books, and then it moves into the New Testament. It gives you a little more break on the weekends and so on, where you can actually read the Bible all the way through. Wouldn't it be wonderful to come the last day of 2023, come to church the last Sunday, and say, I read my Bible all the way through. I remember getting a letter from uh, one of our relatives. I was at a I was at a, uh, a reunion, and Effie Johnson, she was my cousin's grandma, and uh, I remember her coming up to me and saying, where's your church, Dean? This was probably 20 years ago, and I told her, it's over there on Buckeye in South Thompson. She became a member of this church, and she was here for many, many years, and uh, she moved to be with her son, to be able to have uh, her son take care of her, and uh, uh, I remember her sending me a letter, and I opened it up. I thought, I wonder what Effie's sending back. You know what she sent me? She sent me the, the reading schedule with every single day was checked. And she said, thank you for challenging me to read my Bible all the way through. Before she saw Jesus, she read the Bible all the way through. I did read your love book, Lord. Maybe it would be a blessing for you to consider reading the Bible all the way through. What are you going to do? I, I, I saw this, and I want to read it. It says, I will, like Paul, forget those things which are behind and press forward. I will, like David, lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. I will, like Abraham, believe God and have it counted for righteousness. I will, like Enoch, walk with God in such a way that it pleases him. I will, like Jehoshaphat, prepare my heart to please God. I will, like Moses, choose to suffer affliction with the people of God. I, like Daniel, will pray to my God regardless of the king's decree. I, like Job, will be patient in all the unforeseen circumstances. I, like Joshua and Caleb, will refuse to be discouraged when we're just the minority. I, like Joseph, will turn my back on seductive advances. I, like Gideon, will move ahead in spite of the small numbers. I, like Aaron and Ur, will uphold the hands of the spiritual leaders of our day. I, like Isaiah, will fully consecrate myself to the Lord to serve him. I, like Andrew, will strive to bring my brothers to Christ. And like John, I will become the closest 
of the disciples. And I will, like Stephen, pray for the forgiveness of those who harm me. And I, like Timothy, will study to show myself approved unto God. But most of all, I will, like Jesus himself, be willing to die, to do self, to bring more fruit in my own life personally. And recognizing that we really can't do any of that on our own. Because it might just be a wonderful desire, but we can't do it without Christ. And Christ living within us. Remember the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Think about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I can't help but think of verse number 58. And years ago, uh, our, your assistant pastor here, Alfredo Olivares, told me that this was his favorite verse, and I began to read it and study it years ago. And I thought about this passage, and if you look at verse number 51 uh, here, and verse number 52, the word changed is mentioned twice. Look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the, in, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. What's it talking about, being changed? It's talking about the rapture of the church. It's talking about the resurrection. And we know this according to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Bible gives us a clear understanding of the rapture of the church, that the trump of the Lord will sound, and the angel, of course, will shout, and so on, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then all those that are alive and remain, we caught up together in the air. We understand all of this, and so we're looking at this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and, and Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he's mentioning to them that there is going to be a time when the trump will sound, and you will be changed into your immortality, if you would. You will actually then take on in, in, into you your new body, and you will be like the Lord Jesus Christ as far as your body is concerned. Kind of blows me away. If you understand how this all works, then let's have lunch together, and, and we can talk about it and discuss it. But we are going to be changed someday. And, and, the, and the emphasis here in verse number 51 through 58 is talking about the resurrection. Look at 54. It says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, uh, then, then shall be brought to pass the saying written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? And O grave, where is your victory? And I think that that verse 55 is showing us that, that God is, is, is letting us know that he has conquered death. I just did a funeral for a sweet lady, Sylvia, and uh, it was a pretty large crowd, uh, and it was a blessing to be able, an honor to be able to do that. And, and I was talking to the people at the graveside. The family just came together, and I was talking to them. There is a resurrection. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection in the life. And so he's saying, if you believe in that, you shall never die. And so when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, we will go to sleep. Of course, our, our, our spirits are with the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We know all of this. So when we're talking about the resurrection, we're talking about something new, uh, wow, what a change will happen someday to those that will actually be resurrected and then they'll be in the presence of the Lord someday. What a, what a day that will be. We think about New Year and we think, wow, this is awesome, but what about being in heaven with the Lord? And sometimes we want to go there soon and we have to remember that in God's time. And so... The word therefore then in verse number 58 really is the key verse. We're talking about therefore and why is it therefore? It is therefore us to understand that he's talking about since there is a resurrection, because there is, verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. We talked about that in 2021. Unmovable, we talked about that in 2022. Now in 2023, we're going to talk about always abounding in the work of the Lord. And this is what Paul is saying. He's saying, I want you to be steadfast. I want you to be firm in, in what you believe. Uh, I want you to be unmovable uh, and so not moved by other people or philosophies. Man, we have a lot of philosophies today. 
And everyone thinks they're right. If you, don't think I, if you don't think that's true, sit down on any street corner and pull out your Bible. You're going to have all kinds of people coming to you. They're going to tell you what they think of the Bible. They all of a sudden are scholars, you know, while they're smoking their marijuana and drinking their beer and thinking that they know everything because I know the text, what the text says. And I hope that we would understand because of the resurrection, we ought to be steadfast and unmovable. But it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Who has ever done that? Because they understood the resurrection, that they actually then want to stay steadfast and they want to be unmovable, and then they want to always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, that's what the Bible's actually teaching us. It says, goes on a little further. It says, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. Let's go back and look at somebody that understood this because it was the one that wrote this to the church at Corinth. Let's go back to Acts chapter 9. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to another therefore, okay? Let's go to Acts chapter 9. I think it's interesting that we would think about the word therefore. And uh, I want to read a verse to you. If you're in Acts chapter 9, we're going to begin just verse number 1 in just a moment. But we have another therefore in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Paul wrote it, therefore, and you could probably read it with me. You could probably say it with me. If you can, let's quote it together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so the person that wrote that then is actually explained in Acts chapter 9. Let's look at that, if you would, with me for just a moment. Uh, some of the commentators said that we have here an instant, an instance and a picture of conversion, uh, of a human soul pursuing the wrong course and then being arrested by a divine hand and submitting itself to the rule of Christ. And so we have this divine hand that comes down from heaven and changes this individual who is going in the wrong direction. I can't help but think of verses 1 and 2, and I want you to follow along as I read the verses for you of Acts chapter 9. It says, And, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, or, and, sla and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way that were the Christians, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And so Saul is actually an individual that thought he was so right that he could actually go to Damascus and he could actually bring those that were of the way down back so that they could be bound and they could be perhaps persecuted, you know? And so that was his desire. So in verses 1 and 2, I think, first of all, we have a human soul running confidently in the wrong direction. That's what we have here in verses 1 and 2. Somebody who is actually running in the wrong direction confidently. I heard a story, and maybe, maybe some of you might remember, Jim Marshall played for the Minnesota Vikings October 25th, 1965. He received and recovered a, a fumble, and then he ran 66 yards in the wrong direction. Now, listen, tell you something. If you look at the video, and they have, a, they have one, you can see the confidence in his face. He's like, I got the ball, and I'm going to make a touchdown. He's going the wrong direction. I remember playing basketball when I was in college, and I went to college as an old man. I was done with the Postal Service, I think I entered into college at 30, 32 or something like that. And so they had all the married guys who were always together. And, and some of the faculty and the staff said, let's, let's, let's have a basketball game between the married guys and, and, and the staff. So I got together with them. And we were playing basketball. We had company coming in. And I had overload because I had things that I had to get in. And uh, I got the ball. I shot the basket. Swish. I was like, yeah. It was the wrong basket. <laughs> I looked at the staff of Northland, and they had kind of a funny look on their face. 
But I looked at my teammates, and they had a worse look on their face. But I was so confident, Brother Tom. But I was doing something wrong. Maybe all of these years you've been going in the wrong direction. Paul was. I should say Saul was. Until the Lord came and did something wonderful in his life. As I think about this particular verse and understand a little bit more what's going on here, um, I think sometimes people can go through life doing their own thing. You've heard of people running with the devil. You've heard of sins that take different forms in people's lives and they habitually stay there. I think of sins like indulgence and unbelief, sins like indecision. Our souls were created by God and we were created in his image to be able to love, to be able to honor, to be able to please God, to do his will, to give him glory. And Saul was going in the wrong direction, confidently. The passage is very clear that he was going in the wrong direction. The Lord Jesus Christ said, He that is not for me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Saul was due for a change. It's interesting because the Bible gives us a little bit more of an understanding of what happens. Look, if you would, at Acts chapter 8. Let's just t turn the page back, if you would, to Acts chapter 8. And in Acts chapter 8, the Bible makes it really clear here what happened. And Saul was consenting unto his death, talking about Stephen. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling or hailing men and women, committed them to prison. It says he basically dragged them to prison. That's what Saul was doing. Saul was involved with the, the death of Stephen. Turn over, if you would, to chapter 22 with me. Acts chapter 22 mentions it here. I want to read to you the verses, beginning of verse number 19 of Acts chapter 22. It says, And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And this is Saul who turned Paul speaking. I was the one that actually beat and imprisoned Christians. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles and God had another plan for him. And there's the change that we're talking about with the resurrection. And there is a change in your life when you come to know Christ. There is going to be a change in you. You're going to have all things new. Your, your motives are going to change. Your desires and your ambitions will change. And even your appearance changes at times. Because you know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you desire to walk with him. This was the case with Saul. He was heading in the wrong direction, and he was confident about it. You know, we're such bullheaded people as humans. Sometimes we get so thinking that we're right. How, how many women in here, listen to me, my wives, your husbands are so bullheaded sometimes. Do you agree with me? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm going to preach to you whether you like it or not, guys. I tell you that because I am one. I mean, she'll say, would it be better to do this? And, and the way she says it to me irritates me because it's always sweet. You know? <laughs> Why can't she just say, do this, Dean? You know? uh, do you realize that you have blind spots, men? Yes. And for some reason, you've been doing it, and you walk around like you're really something, man. I got it together. And, you know... 
And the person behind you is your wife going, he thinks he's really cool. <laughs> he thinks he's so confident. I, I think that's the way God looks at us sometimes. I formed you in your mother's womb. I made you. I prepared the way for you. I've kept you safe. I've protected you. And I provided every meal for you until now. You breathe my air, but yet you don't even understand. You think you're doing right, and you're going in the wrong direction confidently. This was the case of somebody who wrote, Please be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I think about this story, and I have to go a little further in verses 3 and 5, because there is this divine hand reaching out with compassion to correct and to direct. And I, I really believe that. The first thing is a human soul running confident in the wrong direction. And now we see this divine hand reaching out of heaven with compassion to correct and to direct Saul. Look what it says in verse number 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. That was a beautiful city, by the way. Damascus is the oldest city in the world, and it was known to be in existence even during the days of Abraham. It was called the Pearl of the Orient. Somewhat like Beirut was before the 1950s or during the 1950s. Beirut was beautiful, kind of like Jordan. A beautiful place, this place called Damascus. Um, it bursts upon the view of the traveler like a vision of paradise, someone once wrote. The citizens of Damascus believed that this is where the Garden of Eden was. That's what they thought of. It was actually mentioned that Elijah visited there in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse number 7, this place called Damascus, and he journeyed there. He must have been thinking, here I am with my army, and I am really something because I'm going to this beautiful place called Damascus, and they'll see me coming down the road. And suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and he heard the voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. That was the sticks of metal made with metal points that were actually guiding the oxen or the water buffalo, if you would, that they use now in modern-day Romania and different parts of Yugoslavia. Those Pricks, and why do you kick against that? You know, it's amazing when I think about Saul because Saul was not seeking Jesus, but Jesus wanted to reveal himself to Paul. He wasn't out to seek Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm a seeker. I'm going to go to a seeker church, someone that's seeker sensitive. That wasn't the case with Saul, who became Paul. It was sudden. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it does, and I appreciate in the movie last night, they gave room for the Holy Spirit working in the heart of an individual, and sometimes we have this aggressiveness to say, if you just say this prayer, that you're gonna, everything's going to be all right real quick. Sometimes God doesn't work that way. Sometimes he softens the heart. My grandpa got put into AA, I guess, is it place, Alcohol Anonymous got into he said, that actually helped me with my physical life so that I could understand the word of God so that I could get help with my spiritual life. And I think it's important that sometimes we need to make sure that if God is patient with people, we should be too. But furthermore, we should be faithful to be careful with our own selves and be patient with ourselves. God is developing you. He is forming you. And you think, man, I blew the last 20 years. No, God was preparing you 
because he may prepare you for only two years. I mean, Steve Currington, good night. God prepared and prepared and prepared, and then he used him for 10 years, and then at 45, took him to heaven. End of chapters. Interesting. He come up with the Reformers Unanimous program. Because, you see, God is God. And he revealed himself to Saul with a br bright light. You know, I think, I think we look back at the understanding of the brightness of our Lord in the star and the brightness and illumination of how it works within our own hearts. So this divine hand is reaching out of heaven with compassion towards somebody who actually he could have destroyed, but he didn't. It was the brightness of the Holy Spirit illuminating him, showing him what was wrong and showing him what was right and guiding him in the right direction. You see, when God shines down upon you and out of compassion grabs you and grabs your heart, he illuminates you and you are able to see your own soul in the deepness of those caverns and those chambers of your soul that have been hidden and closed, and you open them. And you say, Lord, take those two. Take all of me. With my whole heart, I'm going to serve you. If you do not serve him with your whole heart, you just might go the wrong direction someday. But hopefully you will say yes to him. There's selfishness there. It reveals the stubbornness. That's the Holy Spirit working within you. Jesus sometimes reaches down through heaven with compassion, sometimes through, through illnesses. You know, I, I can tell you, if you say, Lord, make me into the man you want me to be, prepared to have sciatica pain. If you say, dear God, make me into the woman that you want me to be, be careful because you might go through some really difficult, crushing times. Because God doesn't play games. But sometimes he has to crush you and remold you and deal with those chambers of your heart that you didn't give up and you wouldn't give up unless you were crushed. And say, I give up, Lord. I let go now. I give you everything. Have you done that? If you haven't, January 1, 2023 is a good day to start. And say, Lord, from here on, I'm going to give you all of my heart. And I don't know about my brother and my sister or my wife or my children, but I'm going to give all of, you, of me to you. Come. Enter into every chamber. No secrets with me. No more games. Take all of me. Take my hands. Take my eyes. Take my mouth. Take my feet. Take my whole body and use me for you. I am here. And I'm surrendered the first day of January, 2023. 20, this was Paul's answer. Because it was right away, too, and it was a shock to him. But listen to what he says. He says in verse number five, and he said, who art thou, Lord? He says, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. He knew that whatever came to him, and reached down from heaven with his compassionate hand, he knew that this was the Lord. And you will know when he comes. You don't come around and say, I don't, know I don't know what's happening to me, but something, I just want to turn over a new leaf. No. God is speaking to you. And he is saying, come, give me all of you, and I will give you all of me. And you will have the power to do what is right, even when no one's watching. And so we see, first of all, a human soul running confident in the wrong direction. We see a divine hand reaching out of heaven with compassion to correct and then to direct. But now we have a human soul transformed by the submitting to the divine will. Look at verse number six, if you would, with me, down to verse number nine. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand 
and brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, either to eat or drink. Verse number 10 says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord of a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and require of the house of Judas, one there called Saul, Saul of Tarsus. And behold, he prays. And we know the story that he's completely transformed. What God did in his life was incredible. Spiritual change. And sometimes God allows us to go through different agitations on this side of heaven. And spiritual agitations, by the way, are subdued through spiritual submission to God. And sometimes we have to learn that. Because we don't like the word submit. We have a problem with it. I was talking to the men in class this morning that sometimes when we get tempted, we ought to immediately bow our heads and say, I submit to you, O oh God. I yield to you. The word submit is the word upotasso in the Greek language, which means I arrange myself under. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. The apostle Paul had to continue to submit. He had to continue to press on. He had to continue to put the things behind him. He had to continue to, and so will you. You see, Christianity is not something that all of a sudden happens and everything's right and you're good to go. No, there's maintenance, people. There is a continual submitting to God and he'll speak to you. And then once you get to a certain place, he, he speaks to you even further and then you get to learn a little bit more and he guides you even stronger and you get stronger and, and, you're, and your roots get deeper and, and you become a, a person who's actually having good fruit and constant, consistent fruit. That's what God desires. Sometimes we have personal agitation and things this side of heaven that cause us to go astray and Instead, we just ought to understand with some spiritual agitation, there should be spiritual submission to God. That you can submit to him, and he will give you the strength. To say no, or to say yes, he will give you the power. I think it's important for us to understand this. Going into 2023, that we too have had God reach down to us, spiritual Submission. I think it's interesting when you would ask, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? I think we would have to say that if you come to that conclusion, what does God want me to do? The first thing that you ought to think about is repent from your sin. Turn from your sin. What is sin? I don't have to tell you. You already know it's sin. You already know that it's wrong to tell a lie. You already know that it's wrong to steal. You already know that it's wrong to look at things you shouldn't look at. And so, when it comes to sin, the first thing you ought to do is say, Lord, I'm tired of sinning. Would you please forgive me of my sin? I have yet to meet a person who has not sinned. I met a man years ago that told me that he was not a sinner. And I walked away from him because I wasn't going to argue with him. A man pushed, what is it? Pushed against his will is of the same opinion still. I'll wait till God works with him. If God can't change him, I can't, so why would I waste my time? Every man's a sinner in need of a savior. Say, so what must I do? Well, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And then get baptized. And then get to be a member of a local church. If you don't like this one, there's other churches in the city. Go get, get, get involved. Because God wants you to serve him the rest of your days. I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. That we need to be steadfast, unmovable, always about. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Now all things have become new. Fresh and new. Wow, new year. I was coming to church this morning with Tammy and we were heading to the same old quick trip, you know. But things were just new because it's a new year. A new year to make good decisions. And you know what? God is in the business of refreshing you. He wants to visit you. 
He wants to reach out of heaven and guide you with his loving, compassionate hand if you just submit to him and say, yes, Lord, yes. Have your will and have your way. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Let's have an invitation. If God has spoken to your heart this morning, why wait any longer? Come. This altar has been filled through these last several years, 25 years while I was your pastor, and people come and kneel down. We want you to be able to do that today. Say, here I am, Lord. I want to begin this year fresh and new with you. Just kneel down here and make a commitment to God. I'm going to purpose in my heart, Lord. I'm going to purpose in my heart to do your will. Why don't you say that this morning? Renew your life with Christ. Maybe you're saved, but just want to renew your heart. Maybe you've never been saved. Then come. Someone will show you how you can be saved. But if God is tugging at your heart, he's reaching down from heaven with compassion. Why don't you say, yes, Lord, yes. Don't worry about the person next to you. How about your heart? Would you please stand? No one looking around this morning. Father, I pray that you bless the invitation. Work in the hearts of these dear people. In Jesus' name, amen. No hesitation. Yes, Lord, yes. Yes. No other business greater than this one. want to become a Christian you're not and you know you're not you've never trusted in Christ you never said come into my life and save me there's no hope outside of Christ come someone will show you how you can be saved You know, sometimes pastors can be weird, and they get older, they get weirder. And I remember being at a conference once, and I was telling some folks how many weddings I've been able to do in the 30s or something like that. And I hadn't done that many funerals, but I've had a lot of funerals lately. And I thought about how pliable the hearts are at funerals. I saw a man smiling in the back of the funeral home. His name was Dennis. Big guy, I think he was 71 or so. He couldn't wait to get to the front after the funeral was over and he shook my hand. He said, I got saved 40 years ago. And it was on the way to Stoughton Baptist Church. I was going to a wedding or something and I pulled the car over and I received Christ as my savior. And I got baptized right there that weekend at Stoughton Baptist Church. George Cable baptized me. I don't know who Dennis was. I know who George Cable, and I knew, I knew Stoughton Baptist Church. What a blessing, how refreshing to know. And he was so happy to tell me I'm saved. Are you sure of your salvation today? What a blessing to be able to hear the truth about the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God wants to work with you. He wants to use you. Benito, when you want to close our service with a word of prayer, why don't you come on up here and close our service. And uh, be back tonight at 6 o'clock, the Lord's Supper. I got a meeting with the uh, leaders tonight at 5 o'clock, and then we'll have the Lord's Supper. I know it's the new year, but you got tomorrow off, so why don't you come tonight? Benito. All right.
right, let's pray. Thank you, Brother. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today's service, Lord. I thank you for the uh, wonderful message to remind us, Lord, that one day we will be immortal with you, um, that we will raise one day because you will, you will raise us up, Lord. I praise you for that. And Lord, I thank you for all the blessings of uh, 2022, Lord, uh, the many blessings that you've given so many of us. And Lord, I just ask you, Lord, that we will be used of you greatly in 2023 and that uh, you always remember us that well, there's victory in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.